It's Comics are Great, the visual storytelling show recorded live every other Wednesday at the Ann Arbor District Library in lovely downtown Ann Arbor, Michigan on the corner of 5th and William, comics.aadl.org. And this is the show, video show, audio show, where we talk about comics, comics lifestyle, uh, storytelling, visual storytelling, uh, and all the stuff that goes and surrounds it and... Uh, Spins off from it. And, and combines it, yes. uh, or like, binds it. Yeah. It's the force. It's yeah, the force. It, it, no, it, no midichlorians <laughs> necessary. <laughs> Although they are tasty, <laughs> mm, midichlorians. So uh, bef- before we go any further, I, well, I've got a lot. We got a full house of amazing people in here, but I got to take my hat off to the Ann Arbor District Library and producer Matt Dubay because uh, we got a late start today, but uh, it's it's a okay. Uh, we're uh, we're up and running uh, after a lot of technical difficulties. And Matt, Matt, I think you get the MacGyver Award this year <laughs> for figuring it all out. So I just wanted to make sure that he got a, a pat in the back. He works really hard to put the show together. Matt and Tom Smith and uh, Eric Kloster and Eli Nyberg and all the guys in the production team at ADL. You guys are uh, amazing. So okay. it's really it's what's really amazing is considering the complexity that you know mm-hmm. it goes off so seamlessly for the most part. Yes, you know, like when we have trouble. They they jump right on it, but like most of the time, it's like you don't even yeah. know, mm-hmm. right? You know, right? Just, right. They're like the Keebler right. elves back there, right? <laughs> yes. <Is it>? yeah. <laughs> I you wake up, my shoes are, are are cookies. It's amazing. <laughs> uh, so so let's go around the room and introduce everybody. <laughs> Uh, so I'll start with our Skype guest while we got her. Uh, I don't want I don't want to attempt fate too much, uh, but we got we got Faith Aaron Hicks of let's see, Friends with Boys. That's your big one coming out from first second, right? Um, and but but man, you've been. I mean, in internet years, you're like the grand old lady. Uh, you're like like Dame Agatha Faith Aaron Hicks of the of, of web comics because you started way back in 1999. Were there even web comics back then? It's like the name I know. Yeah. <laughs> Not good ones. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> well, there was Demonology uh, yeah, 101. I don't know. I've, I've just been doing them for ages, and uh, yeah, I started. I put my very first comic page online in 1999. Uh, I was still in still in college then, so that was very exciting for me. And it was not a good webcomic, but you know, I slowly got better and learned how to do comics and you know, just did thousands and thousands of pages of comics and put them all online for people to read. And like 12 years later, no, 13 years later, gosh, time flies, I'm doing it full time. And yeah, my I just had a new book come out from First Second called Friends with Boys. And hey, cool, I like the internet. <laughs> <laughs> and, and there are, there are- 20 wonderful preview pages available at friends with boys at friends with boys. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you can, you can read those preview pages there and if you like them, Hey, maybe pick up the book at, uh, either at a, a bookstore or at your local library at your local library too. Yeah, yep. for sure. Uh, so just give us like a, I'm sure you've been doing this a million trillion times. But what's, what's the short version of friends with boys? What, who, who should read this and why? Um, I hope everyone should, everyone will read it or should read it. Um, that's not what publishers say. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Publishers Watch your say, demographic. They, they like their specific audiences, but I, I hope everyone will enjoy it. Um, I actually posted it online but in its entirety before it was published. And I was really excited by the response that I got. I had all different types of readers of all ages, um, both genders, other genders, every gender, <laughs> and that sort of thing. And they all really seem to enjoy it. Um, the story is about uh, a girl going into her first year of high school. Um, but up until that point, she's been homeschooled. And she has three brothers. And so she's learning about who have all gone to high school ahead of her. And so she's learning about, um, I guess, the sink and swim reality of being a teenager. And for the first time, she's dealing with peers that she's not related to. Um, it is ever so slightly autobiographical um i was homeschooled until high school and i also have three brothers (laughs) so uh so yeah okay well there you go and it's at uh friendswithboys.com as you can check out the preview and available from for second book and available for second publishing the pixar of comics as i've said many many times (laughs) in other places that is how they are known yes throughout the world pixar Uh, well i mean that's that's the the thing i say the reason i say that is that they have yet to put out a book where i look at it and go this is a real stinker you know (laughs) everything they put out is really good they seem i haven't i haven't put out anything through for a second book. i know (laughs) that's what i'm saying (laughs) it's only quality so that guy who hasn't put anything out for first second books yet happens to be paul story who's returning to the show again thanks good to have you back paul good to be back yeah I, I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm pretty shocked to be to be working with them and uh, to be, I don't know, published by them. It's it's kind of, it's a real surprise to me. I, I never thought I'd end up working or be you know making a living doing comics. But you know, it goes to show you, you put your comics on the internet, and you never know where you'll end up. So do that, kids. Stick with it, kids. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, there we go. 
uh, 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 Dave Magatha, Faith Aaron Hicks tells kids, <laughs> just put it on the internet. I more like Dame Maggie Smith. I, I would see, I was thinking. She is yeah. awesome, yeah. She is pretty awesome. But you know what I want to see? I want to see a fan video by Kevin Copa of, <laughs> of uh, Dame Maggie Smith marrying the Emperor from Star Wars. <laughs> no! <laughs> she deserves so much better than that. Oh, Palpatine, please. <laughs> yeah, what's the garbage? I will not. <laughs> why Why haven't I seen Vader, this? Vader, take out the garbage. <laughs> <laughs> and then, oh. And then, yeah, the Vader does a Krusty the Clown. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, but Kevin Copa yeah. returns to the show after I don't know how many it was episode twenty one. Yeah, yeah well, comicsagreat.com dot com slash cag two one uh, mm-hmm. of the Avatar, the last Puppet Bender. But now yes. the name has changed. You got a new series yes, coming indeed. out. Yes, indeed, Legend of Puppet Bender. <laughs> <laughs> Big change, yeah, right? <laughs> On the YouTube's, and that's at youtube dot com slash corner sphere. I'll try to do a mnemonic here because oh, nobody sure can that. remember yeah, anything no, no, that you're hearing. It's a dumb move audio. on my part, but no, no. <laughs> it, okay, so I so there I was with Franz Kafka with a K turning a corner with a K and suddenly I saw a phantasm sphere with two oh. knives coming out of it coming at my head. Corner sphere, phantasm ball, turning a corner with Franz Kafka. That'll help you remember it, baby. <laughs> cool with a K. <laughs> cool with a K. Uh, corner sphere. That's where you can find your videos and you just got a new video posted yes. uh, in mm-hmm. regards to The Legend of Korra. Uh, awesome video. <laughs> uh, Matt, do we have that video or no? Oh, okay. Matt's okay. working on getting the video queued up. Sure, yeah. But, He's but like, can... why are you tempting fate? <laughs> I know, I know. After all these technical difficulties, like, hey, Matt, could you also use a flamethrower and juggle yeah. and uh, pour yeah. some water on the mixing board while you're at it? Uh, but uh, but so... not the Pepsi syndrome. What? Sorry, old Saturday Night Live. Group, but oh. Shit. Before your time. Yeah, way back in, like, 1986. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, more like... Uh, 78. Oh, okay. Well, oh, we can uh, look it up. Eric, Eric in the chat, Eric Closter, EJK <laughs> on the Twitters, we'll look it up and put it in the chat. Uh, so tell us about this new video that you got uh, yeah. kicking off the new uh, Korra <laughs> series or, or running in tandem with the new Korra series. Yeah, well, uh, it, it really, it, uh, it it came about more as a video response. As it turned out, you know, back in 2000, uh, I believe it was 2008, uh, we had uh, Mike and Brian were at a New York Comic Con 2008 and they saw the Avatar puppets that I had made just brand new, had premiered the first time. You know, Dave Roman and I had kind of collaborated on premiering this puppet video just for fun at the fan panel they were hosting there. And Mike and Brian were, uh, of course, uh, at the main Avatar panel and happened to see the puppets. And Mike asked me, oh, gosh, would you make me one of those? And I was like, <laughs> sure. <laughs> <laughs> not, not realizing that it would be a lot of work, but <laughs> it, was, it was worth it. And I, I made him an extra ink puppet and uh, presented it to him uh, at Comic-Con that year. And then later on, uh, now they made a video on YouTube pr- announcing the coronation, and at, like the Queen's coronation is what it, you know, I, right. I'm wondering if there's a little thought behind that, but it's it's Korra, as in the character Korra, space, nation, which is the um, online sort of fan club Tumblr announcement page where they've been posting up artwork and uh, video clips and all sorts of things leading up to the premiere of the new show, kind of uh, showing off, you know, little uh, previews for everybody. And to announce that, they uh, they made a video... Um, Mike Nitzo, you know, Michael DiMartino and uh, Joaquin DeSantos, they all got together and they made this little YouTube video where they're sitting at like a board table and, and they're like, they all announced like, hi, I'm, I'm Brian and hi, I'm Joaquin. And then, then they had uh, Mike use my ink puppet that I gave him to act like himself and he put his glasses on it. Yeah. And uh, it, it, was, it, was an, it was a really cute little thing. It was kind of a nice little shout out to, uh, to fans, I think, because that really they made coronation for the fans. Mm-hmm. And it was kind of a nice little fun little, uh, you know, Thrill for me to see you know them using the uh, the puppet that I gave in them an back official in the day. video. Yeah, yeah in an official sure. video. And but then I thought about it and I'm like, why would Puppet Ang be sitting in for Mike <laughs> DiMartino? And I knew the reason why. It wasn't by his own choice. It was by force. Right, and so that's where this video comes in. Matt, you have it queued up so we can look at it for a little bit. Or were you playing that? And I just wasn't paying attention to the monitor. Uh, but yes, Aang gets abducted mm-hmm. by a, a startlingly good-looking uh, <laughs> uh, secret agent. Uh, oh, thank you. Well, well, he's more interviewed by the startling and good looking. The, right. Because the people who actually kidnap him are. That's right. The big, big, big tough guys. Are big, shrouded. Yeah, they're, yeah, they're goons. We yeah. keep our hands clean here at the agency, <laughs> sir. And, and yeah, it, it, it looked almost like you cast David Tennant for the role. It was, <laughs> it was, it was startling. But uh, but anyway, so yeah, the video's up on uh, YouTube.com slash Corner Sphere mm-hmm. if you want to watch it later. It is, uh, uh, was it Legend of Korra? 
or no coronation the true story so you can put coronation true story into the search field and you'll you'll find it there you go mm -hmm. so uh and and man i gotta take my hand off the production values on this new episode <laughs> look amazing i mean it looks like a tv show thank it, you it's, thank it, you that was our intention definitely i can't wait to watch it on my uh yeah. you know hdtv to actually see because like the lighting yeah. is great the as shots soon are as great. he gets one yeah yeah, yeah right. <laughs> as soon as oh. i start making some money from doing this stuff and then i can buy a tv <laughs> help jersey paypal me today yeah. no but uh <laughs> but anyway yeah it's, yeah. it's really think that good thank you no it doesn't won't work oh. <laughs> so I uh, need to set up a donation. But that Kickstarter. leads <laughs> <laughs> Kickstarter for my new TV. No, <laughs> no, I don't think that works. I think that's actually outside of their terms of service. Now, okay, so uh, we're going to talk about Legend of Korra today. Yes. Yeah. Awesome new show. And mm -hmm. uh, I wanted, uh, as, as the lead into that, you know, we're talking about mm -hmm. your videos sure. that you make, which are like a response to yes. official videos that are made. You mm -hmm. talk about the Coronation Tumblr. We talk about faith putting stuff online, and lo and behold, uh, magically, somebody comes along and says, hey, you got the goods, kid. Let's give you a publishing deal, right? Um, yes, that is exactly how it happened. <laughs> and, it, and it happened in, in like like 20 minutes, didn't it? I was, was going to yeah. say, and, and did the, the person... Money started falling. <laughs> did, was, did, did the person sound like like Jersey was making sound? <laughs> hey, kid, come on. Where can I <laughs> it was <laughs> actually <laughs> Stanley. Yeah. Time to make a living at comics. <laughs> <laughs> and, he, and he even had like a little radio mic that just that, made his that way That starts with C, <laughs> which right now. <laughs> yeah. Dateline, you won. Uh, but no, I'm picturing uh, the editorial director at first second wearing like one of those little, what are those hats? You know, like the little flat hats and they're white and they have a stripe on them. Oh, with the American boater? Colors. The boater. What are they called? The boater? The oh, straw, yeah, yeah. The straw just, boater. Uh, yeah. I can't picture it. <laughs> it's like all the, uh, like all the. Uh, I thought it was called a pork pie. Yeah, it oh. depends on no, th yeah. if it's the straw <laughs> one with that barkers tend to wear. That's a boater. Oh, okay. Mm. The pork pie yeah. hat is flat on top, but it's usually made out of fabric. We learned something today, everybody. <laughs> uh, <so. laughs> and sharing is caring. Yeah, right. Talk about boaters in the future, because I will know what that is. Yeah. But what? But you know, it's like it's like Paul and I were talking before everybody got here mm -hmm. about how it was like, wow, you know, there's all of this fan stuff that goes into promoting the Cora show. They put mm -hmm. it online for free, yeah, weeks before it even aired on television. That really and surprised I, me. I, I initially <laughs> started out by saying, "So, how is Kevin not in jail?" Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like it's like how how are they get? Are they cool with him making these videos? And yeah, they are. Yeah. right. And then I, they even, well, obviously, I already knew that because I watched <laughs> the video. But but I but, was just like, wow, that's yeah, a I, different approach. It is. Well, I, I did apologize to Mike later. And I, I said, I'm really, I hope you don't take, because you, you never know, you know, because if you're featuring a video about someone being kidnapped, sometimes that can be a little weird. But he's like, no, no, it was really funny. So. No, it was funny. Yeah, it was I, think it's, I think it's definitely a sign that you've made it if, um, you're, you're, you know, what you've created, your comic, your TV show, whatever. <laughs> I think it's a sign that you've made it if you have fans that are so enthusiastic about yeah. it that they're doing, mm -hmm. you know, these videos. I, like, I, I really like it. Okay, no, I shouldn't say I really <laughs> like it, but I take it as a sign that the work I'm producing is good if people start slashing the characters. Characters. <laughs> so oh, yeah, I mean, I, I think anything that inspires fan passion, sure. I, I think it's a good thing. Mm -hmm. Uh, it, whether they're uh, slashing or shipping, right? Those are the two things you want to have happen. Yeah, now everybody ships, but yeah. when you hit slash, that's when you know Th that that's yeah. really making. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but but you know what? It's like, and then here we got you, Faith. You you uh, for a second let you uh, sin, or, uh, serialize the entire graphic novel online yeah. for free before they collected it. Oh my gosh, we are in a different time than we were just five years ago, aren't we? Yeah. I mean, where everything was under lock and key before that with most publishers, but now they're saying, hey, go ahead, uh, broad, broadcast your comic to the internet and let people form a fan base around it, get invested in it, and then when we collect it as a book, they're gonna buy it. And then the, uh, Avatar, uh, the guys at Avatar say, hey, let's mm -hmm. let people make fan stuff. Because yeah. that helped, and my Twitter feed was spammed up like crazy with the coronation hashtag. You know, mm -hmm. people saying like, uh, "Support coronation, so we yeah. get extra free stuff, and we can get the new the new episode." And that's, and that's just amazing. And they're rewarding fans for spreading the word about it. Yes. What, a, what an incredible idea! You know, yeah. to have yeah. you know the grand prize being coming out and meeting them at Comic Con, and yeah. then if you yeah. if you have a certain amount of you know views and things like that, then they give you free art. That they're mm -hmm. sending to you, and it's just—it's amazing what they've been doing. This is this is actually an intervention for me, isn't it? Jersey? <laughs> yes, it is. That's Jer what I was Jersey's hoping. He's been trying to get me to do more stuff online. I, yeah. th this is the elbow drop. I've been leaning on oh. you, leaning on you. It didn't work, and finally, okay. Well, I'm just going to bring in two heavy hitters, <laughs> two stars of the internet, to show you that you don't got to be afraid of the internet, right? Yeah. It's, it's and you know, but it, I don't. Wait, but all these tubes, <laughs> how are they connected? <laughs> I poke in the icons, and nothing happens. <laughs> But uh, okay, so we got that. We're in a different publishing time, which is really cool. But yeah. now let's talk about the show because yes. oh my gosh! Oh yeah. golly, pretty cool, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Pretty cool. I don't know. If I thought like, it was pretty cool. Yeah, if you I like mean, awesome hey. animation and stuff, that's like the vastest understatement of the century. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, 
No, I mean, it's, okay, here's my first observation. I wonder if you guys can weigh in on. This is the value of auteur-style entertainment with yes. like a vision behind it because here these guys came along off of a massive hit. Mm-hmm. Everybody loves Avatar The Last Airbender. No. And it's like, oh, well, we're going to do a second. Oh, is there going to be more Aang in it? Uh, no, no. Mm-hmm. Oh, well, is it going to be more about uh, you know the Earth Kingdom and the Fire Nation? No, we're going to have it take place in a new city, and um, there's going to be cars, and there's going to be radios, and there's going to be like pro tournament matches, televised or broadcast, rather, on the radio. Uh, and uh, yeah, oh, we lost Faith. There goes Faith. No. Oh. Faith no more. Oh. <laughs> oh. See, that, that actually works, though, on two levels, <laughs> because, you know, it's a Stan Lee type, you know, reference, too. Talking <laughs> about Stan Lee, yeah. yeah. Okay, so we got okay. Faith back. Let me see if I can give we her can a ring. Me, uh, uh, oh, okay. So, so Tom was gonna steal my my uh, mouse what, to mm-hmm. call Faith back. Oh, okay. <laughs> 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 All sorts of con- kind of uh, confusion going on. I uh, quick download the new version of Skype. No, oh, oh gosh, we don't need to be doing that well, while you're trying to. Yeah. So hey, there's there's back. Faith. Yay. All right. There she is. Yeah, my internet just crapped out for some reason. I don't know. <laughs> doesn't normally do that. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> so let's see if I can... Your socialist internet up there in Canada. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know. It went on strike. The workers control the means of production. I don't know. <laughs> Rogers. Uh, but anyway, so, uh, you know, it's like it's like they, they did so many changes to this mm-hmm. show, right? And it seems like everything that they were saying and showing was constructed to make me go, oh, I don't know. I don't know. You're kind of, you're wrecking the, the classic formula here. Mm-hmm. And then you watch it and it's just as good, if not better than the original, but it's totally different. And that's what happens when you get, uh, you know, a vision behind a series yeah. like that, right? Absolutely. No, absolutely. Oh my I, gosh. I love the, I always could say, I love the cars. I love the blimps. <laughs> uh, the, uh, the, the polar bear dog. They lost me. <laughs> <laughs> is it a bear? Is it a dog? I don't know. Lee Sherolis is in the chat saying, "I thought of it like a new show instead of the next chapter." Yes, oh. no, that's that's what's incredible about it—the fact that they could, you know, and the and the fact that you know, initially when everybody saw this, at first we were just like you said, we're like, "Whoa, what you, what is this?" You know, yeah. I don't, I don't know if I'm going to like this. Avatar is all about swords and and, and you know all the the, you know the sort of classic. Uh, historical type of setting in a sense yeah. but this really really works and it wor- and what's great about the fact that it works is it's exciting because it's so new yeah. you know yeah 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 and and it's it's building on the old stuff but mm-hmm. in a way that isn't heavy handed right right it's like when when the police show up and they're metal benders, <laughs> you know. It's like yeah, yeah. It, it, at no point do we go like, or is anybody going like, I don't, I don't get it. It's, they're just like, oh, metal bending, right? And so we just take it for granted if you're a new viewer. But if you're mm-hmm. an old viewer, you're like, oh, this yeah. got something to do with yeah, top. Yeah, yeah, I know it's got something to do with top, mm-hmm. right? So it's like they're doing payoffs without looking at the camera and winking at exactly. us at the same time. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you had anything to say about that, Faith, about like that your take on the whole new world with cars and radios and. Oh, no. Yeah, um, oh, I actually it really enjoyed it me. when I first <laughs> saw the. Um, I can't see you guys for some reason. Your oh, video I back. apologize. That's my doing. Let me get. Let me turn my video on. Okay. All right. Well, I'll just ramble on. <laughs> um, I really liked it when I first saw the uh, the first trailers for it. It actually reminded me a bit of uh, Kung Fu Hustle. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Which is a great movie. Mm-hmm. And of course, you know the um, the creators have gone uh, on record with saying they really liked Shaolin Soccer. That it was inspired inspired a lot of the original Avatar, um, the original Avatar: The Last Airbender show. Um, I don't know. I mean, I think the steampunk thing is thing is cool. I think it's um, I think it's a lot of fun. I I feel like maybe sometimes the designs are like I, I come from a background in animation. Um, I I train. I went to college for it for about three years. Um, I I really liked the original design animation designs in Avatar. Like they're very streamlined. Everything has a purpose. Everything has a place. Um, I feel like they've taken that that design to the next level with uh, with the new show. Um, Every now and then, I feel like, man, it looks so good. It's almost too much. <laughs> Is that insane? Um, but no, I, I think it's fantastic. I mean, what a like, what a ridiculous criticism that is. I don't even, <laughs> even know if that's. I don't even know if that's a criticism. Take I don't back your quality. Criticizing yeah. it. <laughs> well, it's, um, it's a, but I feel almost... like it's. I mean, it's probably going to reward multiple viewings for you to just sit there and actually look at look at the designs and look at the world that they've built in there. Um, um, oh yeah. Yeah, it's cool. Like I'm really excited about the show. There's not um, you know, I'm a big fan of animation and there's there's not a lot out there that's that's narrative driven and that's um that's done at this high quality. So it's really exciting to see Nickelodeon willing to invest their money in a show like this. Mm-hmm. 
I would even go so far as to say I think the animation's even a little bit more improved over the last series. Oh, yeah. oh it, definitely. Mm-hmm. I, I think hands down it is. Um, like for me, I um, I really liked like okay, you look at Avatar and it's so the fight scenes are so amazing and um, you know they're really good at drawing the re, you know drawing the viewer in um, at you know working it from these dynamic angles mm-hmm. and it, it all works you know you watch it and it makes sense mm-hmm. and they're really good at that but at the same time you know and, and I noticed this especially in Korra um, the acting has really gone mm-hmm. to the next level like you'll have really subtle scenes between like Korra and Tenzin you know mm-hmm. where they're just talking or interacting and you can really feel the emotion in the scene and the emotion in these characters and I, I mean I worked you know I and that kind of animation is, is tough and it's expensive because it's, you know, it's yeah. time consuming. Yeah. You're paying people to, to animate these little tiny scenes and these little tiny moments. So that's that's really where um, the show blew me away. Just the acting was so good in yeah. it. And, and the fact that the humor is still there, too. You know, when I oh, saw yeah. when I saw the bum come out of the bush and like want to <laughs> share the, 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 the fish with her, I was just like, yep. This is Avatar. Yeah. It's, and, and it's, sparkly, it's all right the here. Sparkly bush. Yeah, the sparkly, sparkly bush man, I think, is what they're calling him online now. <laughs> I, I, I love, too, the, so you live there? Yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I live in the bush. I live in the bush. Well, that and that's that's the kind of thing that where it feels like the creators. This is part of their vision coming through. Mm-hmm. Is that from the start, the series has always been. And I apologize, Faith. I can't get our camera activated, so you're just gonna have to hear us oh, instead okay. of no, see that's us. Fine. That's fine. Uh, but but that's actually probably better for you. <laughs> mm, yeah. Uh, but well, at least with two thirds of the group. With two thirds of the group. I mean, not with, with David Tennant like, over whoa, here. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah. I have Betty Davis eyes. <laughs> but what's but, Betty Davis doing? For eyes? <laughs> Using world Oberons. But but oh. but one of, the, one of the things that they do in that series from the start was there was this really great balance of the high drama, the high stakes of the overall you know thrust of the narrative. But then it would mm-hmm. they break for humor, and the, when the humor happens, it's big, like the Cabbage Guy in the original yes, series, right? right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and oh the, man, I hope like they bring back some of his descendants or something <laughs> like that, <laughs> some kind of callback because. Uh, <laughs> and I think maybe they'll have like a coleslaw you, gang or something. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's what you could do. You could have you know family generations have joined together, and you have a cabbage merchant who foams at the mouth when he's excited. <laughs> <laughs> There you go. There you exactly. Go. Right. Uh, I think about like the episodes when they were the, the first one, uh, the first episode where they go to the Earth Kingdom and they meet Boomy, I think his name is, yes. right? Mm-hmm. And they do that thing where they're doing all this surfing on the different roadways right. of the Earth Kingdom. Mm-hmm. And, and like they're, they're skating around really fast and Aang's just, you know, mm-hmm. having a good time. And then all of a sudden they cut to this training group and they're like, oh, and we're, we're everybody getting into formation. And then all of a sudden, or they, oh no, it's like a soldier must be ready for anything. Yeah. And then all of a sudden they come crashing into this giant rock surfboard and it still stores, it freeze frames on freeze them. Frame. As <laughs> <laughs> as they're as they're yeah. smashing apart all these guards and they're all just like <laughs> making this goofy cheerful face. Yeah, right. that's that's the essence of that show for me yes. is that it can ride so f- both, both sides, yeah. right? And it's oh, not definitely mm-hmm. like I I really enjoy the the humor personally. I mean, I think um, just recently in in my own work and in in comics, I I've become really interested in using humor to you know to contrast the the drama of a story. Um, you can have, you know, if you have a story that's just all dramatic. So if the story, say Avatar, it had absolutely, um, say it had no humor in it whatsoever. So it's just this dark, dark story of Aang defeating, um, you know, the Fire Lord. And that would be a really depressing show. But because, you know, you have these wonderful moments of humor and all the humor, not sorry, not all the humor, but a lot of the humor is character based. So you have these characters, you know, like Sokka. I mean, you know, how can you not love that guy? Um, <laughs> I want him to be my TV boyfriend. <laughs> but, um, you know, you just engage with these characters through the humor. Um, and I think it really, it really supplements and helps the story. Um, you know, you have these moments of up and down and up and down where you have a moment of humor followed by a dramatic moment and a moment of humor followed by a dramatic moment. But it never feels cheap or forced. Um, I I don't know. I, I don't know how they got so many good writers to work on this show. Yeah, that's um, I, I would like to meet these guys and beat that secret out of them. <laughs> you think about you think about like the psychology uh, at work there, uh, the, the emotional um reassurance of a humorous moment during a dark moment. So I think of like the series finale of the original, like yeah. the end of book three, mm-hmm. and all this bad stuff is happening. So Aang's facing off with Fire Lord Ozai, is that mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Yep. And then and then there's the, the, the blimps are coming, they're burning yeah. everything in town. And then it cuts that part where uh, Sokka is figuring out what they need to do, and he does this uh, air, or no, is it like airship slice, you know? And he does this big, goofy <laughs> gesture. 
And there's something about there's something that, like it's this dreadful, really scary moment that is you're you're set at ease by well, Sokka is still Sokka no mm-hmm. matter what, no matter how yeah. bad yeah. this is. Is Sokka still yeah. gonna be? So like those kind of humor moments can be like a way to like keep you from signing off. Like I can't watch anymore. Like Office mm-hmm. Last Days. Ann and I, when we were watching it, we almost had to shut it off because it was yeah, so that, oh emotionally rough. That, no, that was the yeah. worst. Yeah, the humor cuts through the tension of the scene. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. really important. Um, and I think it's a way to reassure the audience that in some ways everything will be okay. I mean, yeah. you know, these mm-hmm. uh, the Avatar, it's not the Hunger Games. You know? <laughs> 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 it doesn't have this, you know, this... this grand dramatic mm-hmm. i guess uh, statement to make about the price of war and the cost of war especially on children um you know these are kids right. in in a time of war facing down against great evil but at the same time you know the, the creators have cut cut these moments with humor mm-hmm. and for me that makes the show even more touching even more engaging um it is just that darn good <laughs> I, I think that it also very much rings true at least for for me my family we, in our darkest moments, we cut up like nobody's business. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, yeah. it's just... Uh, Which is know. why Paul is always joking, everybody. Because <laughs> <laughs> his life is because a dark, sad place. dark, sad place. <laughs> <laughs> well, no. well, well, Jersey, I think it's a fine, fine life. Is that Eeyore or is that Lorenzo else. Music? Or Emo Phillips. <laughs> or Emo Phillips. <laughs> no, this, emo is more up oh, like this. Oh, that's true. Yeah. This is, this is Carl, Carlton oh the Doorman. No, uh, that's... Uh, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Suddenly, we've gone into oh. no, yeah, no, impersonation okay. improv. No, no. I want. I want to. I want to jump on this Neil, one. Neil mm-hmm. would be all over me on this. Neil <laughs> yes, would be yes like, he would. <laughs> well, he's co- he's coming to Kids Read Comics, by the way. So that's exciting. So he can take a poke at me for jumping in and trying to trying to one up his. Uh... Uh, we've got a cage match set up. Oh, uh, okay. It's going to happen on the third floor. Everybody, aadl.org or comics.aadl.org or Kids Read Comics Center. Pro, pro bending. <laughs> uh, I want to talk about this. and I want to get Faith's uh, take on this as as somebody who writes stories and. Uh, you know, uh, with a lot of female protagonists, and then I want to get uh, Kevin your take on this mm-hmm. as like a, as a super fan of the sure. series. Uh, I was you, really cape. <laughs> I, I I I was really taken at how authentic Cora felt as a teenage girl. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, that's something that's super easy to screw up because mm-hmm. she runs the gamut from uh, you know like. Tech with you, Dad. I'm gonna do my own thing. To overly exuberant, like I can't wait to try this thing, and I screwed up, and I'm embarrassed now. You know, mm-hmm. uh, she, she can go that full. And as a guy who teaches a lot of teenagers, that is how they act. You know, they're not just always like the whole everything sucks, everything's lame, oh, fail. Uh, <laughs> sometimes they're also really buoyant and exuberant and goofy. Uh, and they, and I'm surprised at how well they balance both those things. I wonder if you guys could speak to that a little bit, like how they handle that in car. Uh, oh. In car. Yeah, I mean, go, ahead, go sorry. Faith. Can I go first? Or, please, yeah, please. All right, sorry. Um, yeah, I I feel like she came across really well. Um, I actually I really liked her as a character, and a lot of that, um, I felt she was easy for me to identify because uh, I remember. Okay, growing up, you know, I mentioned it at the beginning of the program. I was homeschooled, and um, you know, I sort of entered into teenage society at the fairly advanced age of about fourteen when I went to high school. Um, and I feel like I identify with Cora in a lot of ways because it feels like that's what she's doing as well. You know, she's, uh, you know, a young, young woman, young, young lady or whatever, not a lady, young woman. (laughs) And, uh, you know, finally she's been coddled and sort of hidden away in this, you know, fairly isolated water tribe. And now she's being introduced into this brand new world. And on some levels, like she responds to, to people in in the way that I responded to them when I first went into high school because I was so socially oblivious. You know, I just, I'd never been around um, large groups of people, large groups of my peers and that sort of thing. And and I also especially like, I didn't act like a girl. <laughs> I know that seems like a weird thing to say, but um, y- you know, there's like a certain social layers and how girls act. And you know, a lot of that comes from interacting with other girls and interacting with, um, I guess, media and stuff like that. And I hadn't had that exposure. So in that way, Cora, her character rings really true. And I mean, I love the fact that, you know, she's a jock and she's a little, maybe a little bit stupid, but at the same time, super powerful and in for punching people and, you know, going through doors and that sort of thing. So I'm, I'm really excited by her character. Um, I'm really excited by who she is. And, you know, it'll be interesting to see how she deals with getting in over her head. Um, I think she's very authentic. Yeah. Sorry. Ramble yeah. over. <laughs> no, no, that was great. Uh, Kevin, you have, did you want to... 
Oh well, weigh in on, or did or did Faith just like come in and buckshot us? Stole all my <laughs> thoughts. No, no. There's a few things. There's a few things I can add to that, which which is just it's 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 interesting to see people respond because it, there's a lot of fan art out there. Actually, of mm-hmm. course, there was from the very get go, from the first time we saw her backside in that one promo shot where we couldn't see her face and had to imagine what does she look like from the front? And, right. And of course, we joked. Well, she's but we gonna, saw, we saw those shoulders though. Exactly. <laughs> them shoulders, <laughs> them athletic shoulders that could crush a man with just looking at him. <laughs> No, but we, you know, it's interesting to see that there's kind of two takes on it, and and she's a strong female character, of course, but there's always seems to be this kind of, it's it's sort of a fandom thing, I think. I think there's the group that wants to see them as the strong, athletic, you know, uh, tomboy character, and then there's the one that wants to see them as the super feminine, because I see two kinds of fan art pop up, where it's like her in like a dress and and looking really really girly and things like that, and then yeah. there's the ones where she's like, like I said, like. Crushing rocks with her bare, you know, her forehead, you know, <laughs> just coming out, you know, just it just looks like it's crazy. So yeah. there's, uh, it's interesting to see the character that they're showing because they're showing two sides of her as well. I, I I was amazed to see just within the first few episodes, the ones that have aired and the clips that they've showed on Coronation, they are really amping up the shipping. <laughs> I mean, the the characters in this one, I'm going to hand it to them. The characters Maco, are old. Yeah, Maco slash scarf. That's exactly. All I have to say. Oh, oh gosh. <laughs> Scarf coming up, right? Yeah, the, yeah. but she, she, uh, they're, the characters are older than this one. They're about seventeen, you know. In the yeah. previous one, they were they were more in their fourteen, eleven age. So they, it was kind of a more of a cutesy kind of a attraction romance thing. So I'm not too surprised that there's more of a teenage kind of a a dating game kind of a feel going on here. But I was really surprised to see it kind of amping up this early. And, oh and man, a, and really? A, were you were you really surprised? I mean, I remember when the first images for. Uh, Mako and Bolin went yeah. up, and it was just a poster with oh. them for opposing. And I was like, my first tweet about that was like, "Hey, are there more pictures of Mako and Bolin around? Because I would like to look at them." Well, I, I, <laughs> I, 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 I don't know about this for certain, but it almost feels like this an apology to Zutarans. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh yeah, no, well, K- Katang went out last time, so we'll we'll do a Fire Nation Water Tribe for you this time. Okay, <laughs> just please stop emailing us, Very please. Possibly. Yeah. Who knows? <laughs> Who knows? I mean, you know, it's, I, I don't know. What can I say? I I feel like they knew what they were doing, <laughs> you know, when they designed these characters. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And I, and they I, just made them, mm-hmm. I mean, come on, the little scarf and everything. <laughs> they just made them super hot. <laughs> Firebender. <laughs> and, and, and from what I'm hearing, too, again, on the rumor mill, is that this, this you know, it's a purpose driven. It's not just for the fans to go squee. Yeah. On about it. There's actually <laughs> something about her progression as a bender that she's going to have to face with these emotions. There's a hmm. purpose for it. That's interesting. Mm-hmm. Huh. Yeah, I mean, maybe that will be, I mean, you know, I think in, I think in, I've read a couple interviews that they did, and I mean, you know, Cora is set up as the opposite of Aang. Yes. She's a very physical mm-hmm. character, whereas Aang was very spiritual. He was an airbender. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm really interested to see where they're going to go with this. And, you know, I think okay. the conflict between mm-hmm. vendors and not be- non-vendors oh. is a really interesting conflict. Oh, I'm really gosh. looking forward to it. Yeah, could you, could you tell us about that? What way to go with this. Yeah. I mean, I, this blew me away. I mean, when they announced it at Comic-Con uh, this last, you know, summer, uh, when, what the theme of the whole show was between that, that because, I mean, let's face it, we had, a, a, we had benders against benders of, of uh, one nation trying to take over the rest. It's like, where do you go from there? I mean, one nation committed genocide, and they had to fight against it. To go in a direction that, you, you, and, and this, and I imagine the show, from what I've read in interviews and things like that, the show was created before the whole 99% uh, situation came about. But it completely echoes, I think, the time that we're in and becomes so much more relatable that you have benders, of course, who seem to have set themselves up in the city as almost a higher class than everybody else. Mm-hmm. And uh, you even saw in the first episode the guys who bully others for, you know, protection money and things like that, you know, yeah. kind of sort of a little bender mafia going on. And then you have the people, of course, who are non-benders that are feeling, you know, oppressed. They're not feeling, you know, like they're, you know, being given their uh, their their due. And now you have this leader who's arisen, uh, Aman, this mass character, who has a group of uh, equalists. They're called the equalists, and they're anti-bender, and they're protesting. And and, and as I think, I, I don't think it's too much of a spoiler to announce that they are going to have uh, a lot more than just protests uh, right. going on as a threat. And yeah, I I think it'll be really interesting. Um, I I mean I've heard some speculation on who Amon is, mm-hmm. you know who um, who he is behind the mask and that yeah. sort of thing. I hope the speculation is wrong. I you know I trust. It's tens of no, I, I, I heard it was I Uncle Iroh. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> sorry? I heard it was Uncle Iroh, but I could be wrong. Oh, My sources yes. may be mistaken. <laughs> if only. Um, yeah, I mean, if only. I, I would love him to be alive for the next couple hundred years. Um, but, I mean, yeah, I, I like this conflict. It's a lot yes. more gray. It's mm -hmm. a lot more, um, rather than, you know, Aang must defeat the Fire Lord, who is yeah. very obviously evil. Um, I I don't know. We'll see where it goes. I'm, would, I'm, I'm pretty thrilled with the beginning of the story, though. Would everybody like to hear some juicy... Rumors I've heard circulating. Oh, scoop, scoop. Uh -oh. This is the first yes, on Comics are this, TV, everybody. This, now, I preface this by saying these are rumors that I've heard fans discussing. This uh -huh. is not anything I've heard officially from anyone, from any official source. So this is, could be is that a non-denial denial? Is that, that what you're doing? You've got it. <laughs> I am covering my bases. I don't want, you know, my DeviantArt mailbox flooded with, you lied! Well, yes, I, I did. But, no, but potentially what I'm hearing, and this is, this is an interesting take. They might not go this way at all, but somebody made mention... That is a possibility. What if Amon is, if you recall, Aang, at the end of the first series, he spirit bended, basically, I guess is the only way you can put it, and he took away Ozai's bending ability. Oh my gosh. So, so wait, Amon is Ozai? No, I wouldn't say he's no. Ozai. No, but what if you had somebody, because I think they're introducing, it seemed to me, you even had you even had Combustion Man. You remember Sparky Sparky Boom Boom Man? Oh yeah. He had this weird <laughs> laser he shot from his forehead. Lasers from the forehead, <laughs> and uh, but it seems to me like there's a suggestion out there that there are some strange mutant aberrant forms of of bending, mm. rather mm -hmm. other than just the four elements or offshoots of them. Mm -hmm. And now that we know that there's a certain type of spirit bending that takes away the person's ability to bend, some it's been suggested on the boards and talked about. What if this Amon person has been born a spirit bender? He knows it, and in some ways he feels like it's his life duty. To remove bending from the world. That's his purpose. Mm. Oh my God. Ooh, interesting. And, and, and the thing that a lot of people are motioning is if you look at his mask, he has a red dot right in the forehead, right where Aang placed his head to remove the bending power from Ozai. Oh. And, and again, oh, I, snap. You know, <laughs> and again, again I, I, only, I, usually don't, I usually don't deal in juicy rumors that may or may not be true if I have no idea about it because I don't have any idea about this one, but that just sounded too good to pass up. So I'm going to put that out there. Everybody can. Squeal, yeah, like and, and, and then when it turns, and, and then when it turns out not to be true, you can send me hate mail. That's okay. Yeah. And okay. You're well, putting... and then the guys are going like, "Oh, I wish we thought of that." Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So. That was a free one from Kevin Copa, everybody. <laughs> uh, no, but I mean, how how tense would that be? You got mm -hmm. the avatar. Oh, I finally got you know uh, air bending down. I'm awesome, and now I got to go fight a guy who, if he touches me, he could take away my part yeah. of bend. Oh no! Oh no! Yeah, that mm -hmm. would be pretty bad. So we already know the people who follow him, the Equalist, the ninja group that we see. They have like the masks on, and they have the like the the eye. You know, the I don't know what they are. They look like almost kind of like quasi gas masks in a way. Mm -hmm. uh, we already know it has been announced that they are. After like the order of uh, Ty Lee, in a sense, the way that remember how she could like block, she could block the chi points. points. As the people are talking about in the yeah, chat exactly. too, yeah. Mm -hmm. That they, you know, he already has people who can stop bending a natural way. It's canonical, everybody. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be. It's. I mean, it's gonna be interesting to see where they go with it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I almost, I, like, I don't know. I, I really enjoy reading fan speculation, but at the same time, I'm like, nope, nope, got to stay away from it, you know? <laughs> so, but I, I like that theory. That's really interesting. Yeah. I mm -hmm. hope it's something completely different. Oh, yeah, no, no. That The one thing that I've learned <laughs> is that uh, they are always full of surprises. I mean, mm -hmm. everything that they've always done has absolutely been a surprise, and it's, oh, been, yeah. and it's been an awesome surprise. I've never been let down by them once. It's got to be tough to be writers of mass, uh, mm. fi mass, mass fiction nowadays with that kind of speculation always going oh, on yeah. it's like the old story of like uh mystery writers publishing their work on the internet and everybody figures out the mystery before they actually get to finishing the mystery book right, right? Mm -hmm. uh and i think about the days of beast wars which we will not talk about <laughs> faith that's when we lost you before was when i brought up beast wars but that was one of the first shows it was your squee that actually knocked the system out. actually it was yeah i overloaded the system with my screaming about it wasn't that. you faith it was jersey <laughs> i love dinobot uh, but but that was one of the first series where fans had an active voice in the mm -hmm. the the show because the internet was you know fairly coming along at that point and there was message boards and and they even like one of the fans became like uh, an unofficial consultant on the show like consulting them about the original Transformers history and everything mm -hmm. but anyway. Uh, there was all this speculation about, oh, is, is it, are they yeah. on Earth? Is it, are they going to find the Ark where the Autobots are? Blah, blah, blah. And I remember I was so used to traditional television uh, writing that you know fans don't get a voice. So I was like, they will never do that. And then they did it. And then they said, well, yeah, well, you guys gave us a lot of ideas, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, but now now we take that for granted, right? Yeah. It's like they, we know they're listening. So it's got to be really tough to surprise your audience. you got to be <laughs> excellent, yeah. right? I, 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 think oh. that's almost, I think that's almost dangerous. I, I mean... I, 
I don't know. I mean, I, I came from the internet. My, you know, my background is in the internet. I'm, I'm a fan of stuff. I, I love, you know, I love expressing my opinion about the things that I'm a fan of. Um, as a creator, I feel like sometimes it's, it's best not, I don't know. I'd like, I enjoy involving, like when I posted, uh, friends with boys online, I, I really enjoyed the response that I got to it. Um, and I enjoyed seeing what people picked up on and, um, what they engaged with and some of the stuff they engaged with was stuff that I was not expecting. And there were certain, like every, I, the, the book had a certain ending and I was very happy with the ending, but some people online were not happy with the ending. Um, the book was already completed by the time it went online, so there was no fan input. But I feel like there's a temptation sometimes for creators to um, do everything to please the fans. And then, I don't know, I mean, does that mess with your original intention of the work? I mean, is it, isn't something that's going to um, perhaps hinder your future creations? I don't know. Um, I, I look at a show like, say, Lost, which uh, at, at one point during its, I think it's six, six seasons? Yeah, during its, its six seasons, um, was really trying to please the fans and really trying to respond to criticism. And the show became less good as a result. Mm. Um, I don't know. So, I mean, I feel like this is kind of a, a big issue. It's something that maybe each creator needs to address personally, mm. decide whether or not they're going to interact with fans and going to let fans affect the future, their future uh, storylines uh, or their future show or comic developments. I, I, I very much agree with you on that. Absolutely. I hope they don't really listen to anybody. I hope they continue to do it. But I do like the fact, you know, there's a, there's a sort of a balance, just like even in Avatar, there has to be a balance, right? Oh, <laughs> I, I hope they don't listen to fans as far as taking Definitely. the story where they want to take the story. You know what I mean? The overall plot, yeah. the overall storyline. But I love the fact that they still throw little bones to fans here and there. For oh, instance, yeah. Oh, for yeah. instance, that, for instance that, crack about, that crack about Zuko's mother? Yes, oh, my you gosh. got it. I was just thinking of that. that. Okay, yes. okay. Let's, yeah, let's exactly. go there. because this... a pair of trolls, those guys. Oh, <laughs> my gosh. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> oh, golly. But, we, we, could, we could mention it on the air. I mean, yeah. I, I, I warned everybody that if, if before they watch this episode yeah. that you better have watched Korra because we're going to talk yeah. about it. So what are you yeah. talking it's about Zuko's mother? It's spoilerific. Which of Tenzin's kids was it? This is one of Aang's grandkids. They are they are great big balls of Aang themselves. You've got uh, Milo. Uh, oh, what are their names? Oh, they, this is horrible. The fans are going to totally jump down my back. I remember Milo because he's the, just the funniest little, the little uh, Aang kid. Um, anyway, I think it was the middle daughter, the one that's always, you know, peppy and ah, talking. You know, the oldest daughter wanted to talk and, and ask mm -hmm. about, you know, oh, because uh, I love this. Katara is on the show. Yep. An old lady. Yeah. Mm. But still kicking. Same hairstyle. Same hairstyle. Exactly. Grandma Katara now. Still oh, working there, Luke. Exactly. The, she, cha the chat room's helping us out. It's okay. Jenora, Iki, and Mello. Thank you, chat room. Thank you. That was Wandering so Dreamer. Iki. Iki, yes. Iki, the middle child, comes in Iki. there. Yes. Oh, cuts her right off, you know, when she was just about to hear information about what happened to Zuko's mother. Mm -hmm. So sad. <laughs> and, yeah, and then, yeah, uh, Cora says, like, it's an amazing story. And I, like, I can't wait to tell you. And then it interrupted. <laughs> yep. And that was where all of the long long time fans went, ah! Exactly. <laughs> and, and, and now, you, I mean, are they going to, like, I know there's. Um, the Avatar graphic novels, and they are going to deal with oh, the, the funny gap of time. Yes, um, I, I own the first one, of course. Mm -hmm. um, I'm big, I was really excited about the creative team. I mean, I'm a big fan of uh, Gary Hurry. I'm not sure I'm pronouncing that correctly. Um, and, of course, Gene Yang, who is a first, mm -hmm. second creator, and whose work I think is, is really fabulous. Um, I, I, maybe I'm talking out my butt, but... <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> um, is... is the story of uh, Zuko's mother, is is that supposed to be dealt with at all by the, the graphic novel series? It's, it's, I, I don't know. I feel like being, I heard that It's being hinted but... at. Yes, it is being hinted at. And okay. And really, right. really, you know, if I, if I could kind of, you know, kind of yes, promote, promote the graphic yeah. novel series, I really, really hope the fandom really gets behind these because they are phenomenal. Yeah. And yeah. honestly, are... if, if you've noticed the things in Korra that are happening are referencing the material that are coming out in these books right now. Mm -hmm. Which is wow. extremely exciting. If you go online, even to the Nick Linden website, they have a great Flash um, presentation that gives you the environments of Korra and lets you explore the characters and kind of gets everybody up to speed on the show in a neat encyclopedic way. Well, there's a section on there. If you go into the Republic City, I think it's the City Hall, they have some books on the corner that if you click on them and you read them, it starts giving you the outline of how Republic City was founded. It's the storyline that you're going to find in here. Wow. And, and th th these books are just phenomenally written. They're fantastic. They are canon, in my opinion, flat yeah. out. I mean, there's some fans who'd argue with me. No, go away. <laughs> they're, they, yeah, these I mean, are, they're definitely canon. I'm so Ooh. excited that Dark Horse took, the, took the, uh, the chance at putting these out there because they're, it's, it's, a, it's a phenomenal read. And I'm going to admit something. 
I was a fan yeah. who did not read them for a long time. I read them a week prior to coming on the show. Oh wow! I, I just I it wasn't uh-huh. like I I didn't intend to. I just had put it off for long enough. And I was like, why did I do that? I pre-ordered the <laughs> next one, and I'm like, why these, these need to come out faster? What what better art team could they have picked than Gary oh, Hero? I mean, that that those those, those people. I, I don't forget how many people are on the team. I think it's two people in the team of Guri Hero. Mm-hmm. Guri Hero. Uh, Guri yeah. Hero. Guri Hero. Guri Hero. Yeah. I don't know. Whatever. Chat, yeah. chat help yeah, us out. I, I was really thrilled when they were announced as the uh, mm-hmm. as the artists as well. I think they do really good stuff, yeah. and mm-hmm. um, yeah, I mean, who could yep. you, who who could be better? Really, and, and, and it has been hinted. It, it's it's shown the formation of Toff's uh, earthbending school, and I believe we're going to be in, getting into the uh, the the art of metal bending and the possibly the establishment of a you know the future police force and oh. maybe even you know. Yeah. And, and as well, uh, and, and again, it was hinted that, you know, obviously they showed the scene where Zuko confronts his father asking about where his mother is, and he, his father's now still playing games with him, so we might find out something. Yeah. It might yeah, finally I'm be really answered. Yeah, I'm interested to see where it's going to go. Mm-hmm. Um, right. I I don't know. I, I think it's great that, um, I mean, you know, I'm a comic creator, I'm, I'm a, and comics are... Even though maybe it doesn't seem like that to us, the uh, the nerds of the world, <laughs> but comics are still you know a niche medium, and um, it's really exciting what? to see a show as popular as Avatar mm. um, choosing to you know reach out and do these comics and do really good comics. You yes. know, hopefully it will encourage kids to pick up more comics. Mm. You know, they really like the Avatar comics, so maybe you can read Bone or uh, Smile or the Amulet mm. series. Or or Teen Boat, which is behind me. Or Teen uh, Boat. Yeah. Uh, that, that's a good one for kids, by the way. Uh, and that's mm-hmm. at teenboatcomics.com. Don't go to teenboat.com. <laughs> Under any circumstances. I oh implore you, do dear. not go there. <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> yes, it's very George Takei. Oh, my. Uh, one last thing that I wanted to touch on, mm-hmm. and then I think, I don't know how long we've been going, Matt, but because uh, we started at, at a different time. Okay, so yeah, we're getting ready for our book recommendation segment mm-hmm. with, uh, I see Sharon Iverson uh, through the window is ready to come in here and start uh, pelting us with awesome book <laughs> recommendations. Um, I want to talk about a little bit about how in both the first series and in, the, in this new Avatar, the heroes are unusual in a very specific way. Mm-hmm. Uh, you think about the, the hero's journey, the Campbellian hero's journey, and a lot, of it, a lot of times when it's done, like you think of the Peter Parker, the Harry Potter, the whole, uh, or our... Willow Elf good from the movie <laughs> Willow, right? I'm a nobody. I'm not good enough to do this thing. Mm-hmm. Oh, but you're very special. And you just need to believe in yourself and you'll do the special thing. That's a compelling story because mm-hmm. it speaks to the fact that when we're that age of like 10 or 11, we're finding ourselves and we're like, I don't know if I'm good enough. But, you know, it's like it seems like that's been kind of trodden out a lot is the I'm not sure. Here comes Aang. I just want to party, you know. <laughs> you you got to save the world, son. But I just want to party, you know. And now I just want to ride on penguins. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, and, who doesn't? And here comes Cora, and she's like, "I'm the Avatar. You better deal with it." Right? That's right. That's yes, her first exactly. line. <laughs> and she's like, she, she, "Oh, and Faith, Faith is attending to yeah. cats while oh, we, while yeah. we just, so we got these heroes who are like very, you know, positive and and active and outgoing. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I'm just wondering if, you know, do you think that that is part of what leads to the success of these series? I, I absolutely believe that because it's so much more realistic. You have people who come from such different, uh, you know, well, for, just, just in Korra. You know, Korra's whole pathway is going to be she's coming from a place of overconfidence and she's going to have to discover she's in over her head. You know, she thinks she knows it all. She doesn't. And yeah. she's going to have to come to terms with that, well, you, and that's very realistic. Yeah, you know? and you you get even right from this right from the get go, right in the first episode mm-hmm. where she's sort of like, "But this is you know," right? She takes on the gang, and uh-huh. it's like, "But I, I uh, took out the bad yeah. guys." What, despite what despite my massive property damage, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it was very, it was very. Uh, which superhero? Yeah, right. Oh yeah, God, right. that was awesome. <laughs> that that was like that was more realistic than yeah. many superhero cartoons I've ever <laughs> well, seen yeah. in terms exactly. of like just sheer property damage. That was great. Yeah. Uh, and I liked that she had to deal with the consequences mm-hmm. of that. You know, you can't just you can't just if you're an all powerful avatar, you can't just go around you know throwing people into windows and you know causing massive property damage and yeah, have right. you know. I mean, <laughs> even when they are dressed I, like twenties. I mean, gangsters. I, I, I certainly I like Cora's character. I, I like that she's a different take on mm-hmm. on that hero because you know as you said at the beginning. Um, a lot of you know our, our kid heroes. It's all about believing in yourself and um, that kind of thing. Whereas with Cora, it's 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 just it's different. You know, she has the she has the skill, she has the technical ability, but at the same time, she's lacking something else. She's lacking. I mean, we'll see what she's lacking. Mm-hmm. We'll see what sort of problems she has to face. Mm-hmm. Oh, 
So yeah. <laughs> okay. No. Oh no, no. Fin- finish your thought because I, I, no, we're gonna kick no. over to book recommendations. Now. Okay. We're gonna close out the last uh, 10, 10, 12 yeah. minutes of the show with that. So okay. uh, this so, is your book recommendation. Yes, yes indeed. Ab- absolutely. Avatar: the, the Promise Part One. You can pick it up now. Part Two <laughs> is hopefully coming out soon. You can pre-order on Amazon. The more pre-orders you get, the faster I'm sure it'll come out. Um, but the, the one last thing that I wanted to leave off with is I just yeah. love, I just love, you know, again, they're alluding to all the shipping and the fans are eating it up like crazy. But I think the one thing that exemplified just the, you know, the whole humor of the situation to me is there was this image sequence on Tumblr that they took the last frames from the second episode, which hasn't, hasn't aired yet, but it's been online for viewing. Mm-hmm. So I'm not going to spoil too much, but it features, um, you know, uh, Korra sitting in her place on the air temple Island. And it features Mako kind of sitting over on his uh, is, is the rooftop of you know the uh, the pro bending arena, and they're kind of looking across the waters at each other's places of abode. And Mako's got this longing look in his eyes. Mm-hmm. And some a fan wrote on there, he put text in there, it's like, "Oh, Cora," <laughs> and and then and then it's got a picture of her like looking like this, you know, from the episode, and it goes, "Ah, oh, pro bending," <laughs> yeah. and and that's yeah, really what it seems too. like to me. You know, great. it's like yeah, you know, she's just she, she wants to fight. That's what yeah. she loves, right? Yeah. That's what that's what it is. That's what we need to ship, Cora. Pro bending. That's what good. <laughs> OTP. <laughs> the chat is agreeing with you. Capital yes. letters. Yes, I love that. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, <laughs> I, I think. I think. Yeah, that's one of the things that these guys are uh, brilliant about. I mean, there were probably twenty times during the original series where I was so taken off guard by something they did in the storytelling, where if they would have been in the room, I would have shook their hand yes. vigorously, like, "Thank you, sir, for." actually doing something so unique that I never saw it coming, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, and I'm delighted by what happened. I'm not just, like, shocked or offended or anything like that. It's like, it's they, they did a really beautiful trick, like the final moment of book yep. three, right, where mm-hmm. they do that pan out and then the quick zoom in for the kiss. Yep. Where I thought, oh, they're not going to kiss. Oh, they kissed! Oh, my gosh! I, I thought I didn't want it, but I wanted it. Yep. Uh, <laughs> but, uh... But the, the, you can count on the fact that they're going to find a unique way to yes. ship these characters. It's not mm-hmm. just going to be like, oh, do I love him or do I love him? Oh, I'm mm-hmm. not sure. Oh, I can't decide. And I got a world to save. No, they're going to find a unique avenue for that. Yep. Did you have well, to go maybe, back to referring I mean, to Hunger Games? <laughs> what, what was that, Faith? Oh, I was just going to say, you know, like like you said, it, it is... I enjoy the unique takes they, you know, they have on these relationships. I mean, you know, <laughs> I, I honestly thought that... Um, I mean, it seems ridiculous looking back on it now, but I honestly thought Aang was going to die at the end of book three. I thought it was going to be some giant sacrifice, you know, the oh, yeah. hero's mm-hmm. journey come mm-hmm. to some conclusion. And, I, mean, you know, I, I love that, you know, that final scene with him and Katara. Um, but, it, I mean, maybe Korra, maybe Korra will end up with no one. You know, maybe maybe that will be the surprise at the end. Maybe she'll sail off into the sunset with uh, with Naga. And I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it, it will be, uh, it, it will be, it will be an interesting ride. We'll see. And the cool the thing is, is that we're, we're ready to be surprised, and yes. you know, yeah. and, and we're, we're cool with that. And, and, and what yeah, a great no. time to be a fan. I mean, we're, we're here, we're talking about Avatar again. That's just so yeah, exciting to me. I know. It, it was such a long I'm really excited. Fast, I mean, you know? I, I didn't get to see the show when yeah. it was airing on television. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I, in Canada, it was brought, Nickelode- we didn't even get Nickelodeon until in Canada until I think last year. Um, and so the Avatar episodes were mm-hmm. broadcast on this this channel YTV, um, and I came into it at right at the end of season two. So I was mm-hmm. waiting for season. So I'd watched you know season one and two, and I was waiting for season three to start. But I'm really excited to you know be watching Korra as it progresses because yeah. then you get caught up in the excitement. Mm-hmm. Um, you don't have to deal with spoilers, which is awesome. <laughs> Um, you know, it was really annoying when that episode leaked and I had a ton of people on Twitter, like <laughs> tweeting all these spoilers. And I was just like, you know what? You need to not do that. <laughs> it, it's like the, uh, you know, like the Doctor Who fans in the States when they were, you know, everybody in Britain was like, oh, uh, uh, and, you know, thankfully now that that's that's been cut down yeah mm-hmm. but you know it's yeah. like you only have to avoid them for like 12 hours <laughs> now well now it's game of oh. thrones right yeah. <laughs> when when the core episodes went online in coronation mm-hmm. it was only it was only in the u.s like I, as a canadian i couldn't access the episode so i had to wait until i think it was like a week later or something like that before i could watch them That's, online oh. i was gonna and say it was like oh my god they're there they're le- you know i'm they're legally available <laughs> for me to watch and i can't see them because i'm canadian oh, <laughs> I, I was gonna say isn't <laughs> that uh <laughs> Isn't that contravene NAFTA? <laughs> like you guys should be able to get that. I, I yeah. don't know. Yeah. I mean, it's, it was it was it was a week of of, of agony. Like, but like you know, right, we, right to your minister. You just imagine smuggling core episodes across the border. <laughs> yeah. If anyone wants to do that for me, I am fine with that. So I, I mean, I'm hoping that maybe they'll release the episodes through Canadian iTunes mm-hmm. or Xbox yeah. or something like mm-hmm. that. So you yeah. know, I can get them that way. Um, I, I don't know. They they look great. I'm I'm, I'm, really I'm also. Oh, sorry. 
I, I was just I'm I'm still flabbergasted that you didn't get Nickelodeon until recently when yeah like, like last in, year in the U S Nickelodeon was was pretty much like founded on you can't do that on television yes. a Canadian show yeah mm-hmm. yeah that's Mr right. Meaty that's wasn't that a Nickelodeon show Mr Meaty yeah. I thought so yeah yeah, yeah that's, that's like, Canadians ah uh, sorry I, we just I, we I just take I, and I take really from don't you understand it. Mostly <laughs> they're just broadcast on you know a, a local cable channel or a local channel cable channel whatever I don't know I don't understand cable but. <laughs> Yeah, um, we had you know Nickelodeon on our TV for like a month as a part of like a special package, and man, it was awesome. It was like Avatar every night and everything. I mean, we had the DVDs, but you know when it's on TV, you have to watch it, right? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, we got we got a uh, Aaron or Sharon Iverson has been waiting patiently out there. Uh, so I'm gonna I'm gonna ask Kevin since you're sitting in that seat uh, to to step out while Sharon steps in. And but I want everybody to see your awesome oh. Appa hat before you go. Yes, indeed. This is this is my Appa hat I made back in. Oh, 2009 so for cool. my first Avatar convention. I thought this is a special occasion. <laughs> Chorus come back. Oppa had had to come awesome. back out. Awesome. So, so thank you, Kevin yes, Copa. Indeed. Kevin Copa welcome. of YouTube.com slash Corner Sphere. Remember, you're turning a corner with a K, and then there's a sphere in there. Corner Sphere. <laughs> That's where you can find all of his yes. videos. But yes, uh, and you're going to be at Kids Read Comics this year. Absolutely. Yay. Yes, indeed. So we'll do, yes. another, we'll do another puppet demo for everybody. Awesome. I'm mm-hmm. so excited about that. Thank you so cool. much you're for welcome. agreeing to come. Yeah, so that's a July. Well, we'll talk more about it in a second. July 7th and 8th. But yes, thank you, Kevin Copa of YouTube.com slash corner sphere and then we got sharon iverson coming in and while sharon comes in to do the transition to the book recommendation recommendation Very segment uh how's your con crud paul uh it's not doing too bad i, yeah. I mean i'm i i uh, thankfully i i think uh coming home and and hit, getting back to workouts it's yeah. like a little mini fever to knock down any bug do you get the con crud faith I'm sorry, the what? The con crud, you know, like going to a convention and then getting sick for two weeks afterwards. Oh, yes. Every every convention I do. I got I got so sick after New York Comic Con in 2010. It's like, oh, my gosh. I, I think I was sick for a month. But, yes, it's horrible, and I hate it, and I don't know. So what you, <laughs> I don't know. Like, maybe I should go to them dressed in those big, like, the hazmat suits. Yeah. Yeah, the yeah. Yeah. yeah, the hazmat suits. Like an E.T. Like yeah. I always a, With sick. the air filter thing on the back. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, 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 yeah I'm... I'm st- I, I always it always starts off as like this little sinusy thing for me, and then like I'm hoping I got it, nipped it in the bud this time. But yeah. it's like, you know, in, in in another couple of weeks, if I can't stand up, you'll know that the con yeah. crud has laid me low. <laughs> well, I, I I pray I pray that Here, you don't. Did you want to use my microphone, Sharon? <laughs> no, thank so you. So we've got Sharon Iverson <laughs> of it, comics.aadl.org in the studio. Mm-hmm. We get to say that now. You're from oh. comics.aadl.org. Mm-hmm. How cool is that? Sharon I- Iverson, the uh, one of the deans of the comic scene in Ann Arbor. Yeah, you keep rhyming. <laughs> it just cracks me up. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's a radio technique. I know. It's, it's a cheesy radio technique, yeah, yeah, but it's a radio yeah. technique. But yes, uh, so you're here to share with the, for the book recommendations. What do you got for well, us? Well, you mentioned the topic of discussion today, and so I thought, well, let's see what we have. I was on desk downstairs, and it's kind of good news, bad news. I found materials that are about Avatar, but I found a lot that were checked out. So the that's good news for yeah. libraries. Yeah. Um, I found this whole Lost Scroll series, that um, is probably been out for quite a while, and I'm I was just I was yep. yeah thank you Paul yep um, I got all four Earth Air Fire Water and these are um, talking about um, some scrolls that give some interesting information if you can be trusted with it um, I also just found that indeed we do as um, we have all the DVDs. And I know that's technically not reading, but what the heck, you know? This it's is where storytelling. It, this is where it came from, yeah. and um, cool. And I couldn't find any graphic novels. We have them, but they're checked out. So you probably have the ones that Kevin was showing us, right. but they're checked out. Yeah. Right, 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 right. So, you know, that part was really exciting. So Yeah, yeah. it's always a good thing when yep. stuff is circulating. And, so. and, you know, I was listening and thinking about, you know, all of the the stuff that the airbenders um, do, or the benders do, and I notice how their hands are in use, and it's just perfect, because this Saturday, <laughs> we have a program <gasps> oh, Sharon, you called, genius. called Drawing Lab, yep. and it is all about sketching the human hand. So, oh. if so you're going to be drawing... Yes. I've got to hand it to you, Sharon. That's oh, pretty good. Paul, you're great. Thank boom, you. Boom, boom, boom. So, anyway, it's from 1 to 4 here at Downtown Library, and um, we're going to have Pat, 
Pat Kander, whose husband, Joe Fu, is a cartoonist, but Pat teaches at the Creative... Center for Creative Studies. Whatever. I, I, <laughs> CCS I the hardest, in the Detroit well, area. College of... Oh, College of Creator Stu- Creative, creative Studies. studies. Yes. And I want to put Detroit on the front of it, but I know. Anyway. Have they um, changed it now it, to the College of Creative Studies? That's, that's how uh, I find it. Yeah. Uh, that's, uh, well, I'll, I'll do some Googling you Google while you guys... It. Yeah, there we yeah, go. Yeah, either that or I wrote the write-up wrong. I was going to say, quick, you Google it. <laughs> but um, that's coming up this um, Saturday. It's kind of our first shot into just pure drawing, mm-hmm. you know, learning how to do something that I've heard many artists say is the hardest part of the human body to do. Yep. Hands so, and feet. I was yep. going to say, I'll take hands over feet. Yeah. Oh, yeah. At uh, least at least with hands, you can usually look at your own. Right. But with the feet, it's, you know, it's you're quite, never at the right Well, angle. you don't yeah. look at your feet all that much either unless yeah. you're weird, you know? Right. So it's like your hands are part of your daily experience. Faith, I wonder if you got a tip for drawing hands. Is that, like, could you give us like a, a five or, second? Or feet. Th- or feet for that matter. Because you you're, you know your uh, way around the human hand. You use them uh, a lot in your in your comics. Yeah, I'm trying to think. Okay, for hands, um, it's always nice to, or it's always, for me, it's easiest to try and get the shapes rather like the overall shape of the hand rather than just the thing the fingers because i think um a lot of times when you start drawing you're not really familiar with the shape of the hand you start kind of filling in all these different lines and it gets really complicated but if you just look at a hand like this like it's got a very shape you know it has the thumb here but then it just it has this very simple triangular shape um there's a really nice uh manga comic out now called cross game and um, the guy that draws it, he draws the hands, and they're all like this. And they look beautiful. Like, the, you know, for close-ups and stuff, they have fingers. But he just has a very lovely, simple way of drawing them. So, you know, if you're having trouble drawing hands, that's what I would recommend looking up. Um, feet are the same way. Like, <laughs> you know, like, they're, they're, a tri- they're like a triangle shape. And then let's let's see if I can draw do a foot. <laughs> <laughs> I know this is unfair. I'm asking you to just like <laughs> describe um, for us how you do this. Yeah, I mean, you know, like a foot is it's it's a triangle shape. Like here's here's the leg right here, and then the foot comes out, and it's and it's it's just a triangle shape like that. So that the is wedge, my recommendation: yeah. is um, look for the shapes, like the really simple shapes in complicated things. Like your hands look complicated when they're like this, because you know you have ten fingers. But yeah. when you put them together like this, you just see, you know, a really lovely, simple shape. So, you know, go from there and uh, try and develop, you know, develop your skills by starting with the basics. And that's Perfect. the kind of thing you're going to learn at this workshop this mm-hmm. weekend, I mm-hmm. bet. Yeah. I or, or, or hide the hands behind things and, and have your oh, hands that, that old behind one. Too. Uh, <laughs> did you ever do that one, Faith, where you put the characters' hands behind their backs whenever you draw them? I noticed oh, that yeah. that's like a, a 13-year-old staple. It's like, yeah. oh, they just always have their hands behind their backs, you know? Yeah, definitely. No, I mean, of course, I've I've tried every trick in the book. Uh, I, I mean, th- one of the reasons I started drawing comics was that I am, like most artists, I think, fairly lazy. I would rather draw things that are easy for me to draw. And when you draw comics, you are forced to draw everything, and you are forced to draw it from multiple angles. So you cannot be a lazy artist and draw comics. So comics force you to learn how to draw. Yeah, yeah. Uh, oh. Anything else, Sharon? Thing? Well, we have coming up in May, first weekend, May 6th, Gail Williams will be coming to talk about flatting comics oh, using nice. Adobe Photoshop. Patbird.gailsore.com mm-hmm. is where you can find Gail's work. Uh, a wildly funny comic, autobio, autobio comic, where she and her boyfriend are a bird and a dinosaur and uh, misadventures in, in the Ann Arbor area. Right. Uh, very, very sweet comic mm-hmm. uh, and also she's Kelverin on the Twitters but yeah she's going to be doing a flatting demo for us mm-hmm. at uh, ADL mm-hmm. at the Comics Artist Forum free monthly event that you guys put on mm-hmm. every first Sunday of every month you can come and uh, experience uh, a great demonstration by a guest speaker like Mr. Paul Story who mm-hmm. came and taught us how to write Right, and uh, now I know how to write. Uh, I, I I won three Ignatz awards yesterday after taking your workshop. <laughs> There's my endorsement. <laughs> That's funny because I've never won one. <laughs> well, it just goes to show how good your workshop I, is. My, my, I, yes, <laughs> if if you add what my knowledge to actual talent, 
you end up with a war. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, Paul's workshop plus talent equals success. There you go. Mm, that's uh, it. Mm-hmm. But yeah, we have all these great local cartoonists come in, and sometimes from beyond. So we had right. Scott uh, Yoshinaga and Audra Ferrici of Nemu Nemu.com mm-hmm. uh, do a presentation for us over the Skypes. Right. Uh, totally free. And it's a way to meet some local cartoonists in the area uh, of all stripes and all ages. Yep. And it's a mm-hmm. good time. Uh, yeah, D- D- Demophon. John O'Ballier is in the chat. Demophon right. on the Twitters. He also did a presentation for us, which yes. was really, really cool. It was fun. Mm-hmm. And he's yep. saying, go to the Comics Artist Forum in Ann Arbor. It is a pretty awesome time. So, uh, okay. so we got a workshop coming up and a free event. Mm-hmm. Cool. Both are free, actually. Uh, yeah, so. and I'm just looking a little deeper. Uh, we've got Janie Ho coming in June. <sighs> To do Adobe Illustrator. Oh, awesome! So cool. We we're we, yeah we've been waiting for her yeah. to come do that for us. Janie so. Ho, who's been on the show a couple times, yeah, uh, yeah. celebrated children's book author mm-hmm. uh, or illustrator and author. Uh, cool. Mm-hmm. Authorstrator, huh? Authorstrator. Authorstrator. Hey, that's hey. A, you coined it. Yeah. There you go. I'm gonna get a sh- t-shirt made. An Authorstrator trademark. Paul story. Sounds like a dinosaur to me. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Okay, so yeah, lots and lots of cool stuff going on. And Mm -hmm. you can find out uh, the dates for all this stuff at comics.aadl.org. And then I got one more thing that I need to talk about. And while I got Faith here, because I want to, I I warned you, Faith, that I was going to harangue you, pester you, and otherwise (laughs) bother you about this. Publicly. Yes, uh, (laughs) kidsreadcomics.org is coming to the Ann Arbor District Library. We're having a meeting about it today after we're done recording. And uh, that's that's, uh, at kidsreadcomics.org. uh, we're uh, reg- or guest registration or table registration is now open until May 15th. So you can sign up at kidsreadcomics.org if you want to apply for a free table. It's a free table where you get to table your uh, sell your comics at a you know a comic convention kind of thing. But all guests are invited to as as payment for your table. Uh, we ask you to participate in a free hands-on workshop for kids. So all weekend long, July 7th and 8th, there's going to be all kinds of. We're going to have uh, Kevin Copa is going to be leading his puppet benders presentation. We've got uh, I just sealed the deal on a librarian cartoonist meetup party on Sunday morning at oh. uh, at the Hatcher Gallery uh, uh, on U of M campus. Ooh. So librarians, educators, uh, and cartoonists are all invited to this private gig where we're going to just uh, talk about how to uh, better advocate for our beloved medium and find new ways to work together. Will there be free breakfast? There will be coffee and bagels. Okay. So Hi. now Paul's coming. Oh, man, I'm there. <laughs> <laughs> so that's going to be happening Sunday morning. And then we've got, um, you know, Raina Telgemeier of GoRaina.com is coming. She's going to be leading some workshops for us. we got uh, Ruth Barshaw of uh, um, Ellie McDoodle, who leads a stellar, stellar uh, how to write uh, an autobio kind of story, uh, how to journal your life. Now, Faith, I would love it if you sure. could make your way out here. Uh <laughs> I, we, we could talk more about the logistics off the air, but I would love to have you at the event to uh, table and sell some friends with boys and then also teach some young girls who uh, would... Uh, I mean, think, think about this. It's like, think about when we were kids, right? Who was one of your favorite artists growing up? Like, one of your favorite animators, cartoonists, whatever? Um, Jeff Smith. Definitely. Okay, Jeff Smith. Okay, it's 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 1992, right? Uh, you just <laughs> you're just a, you're just a pup, and you go to this convention. There's Jeff Smith sitting there drawing. He's like, "Yeah, would you like to draw with me?" Imagine what you would do in that situation. I right? would be like, "What?" Yes, that's the experience <laughs> that we create at Kids Read Comics, right? So, like, kids who admire Raina Telgemeier get to draw next to Raina Telgemeier. That's an experience they're never gonna forget, right? And that's yeah. that's why we ask all the cartoonists to do that kind of thing. So you're not just a face behind a table, but you're yes. there to you know pay it forward and you know get kids really excited about the medium by participating in the medium rather than just purchasing the medium so although the purchasing is just fine no we love the purchasing yeah. we, but, yeah. but it, I, I like paying my rent food good but 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 wait a minute you come from a socialist country with your socialized medicine and your everybody gets money for doing nothing the canadian yeah. film board just giving you That's money to exactly make a movie how it works in canada yeah, yeah. chester brown <laughs> chester brown uh, but no, I'm, I, I kid, I kid. But anyway, it's not just about like doing stuff for free. It's it's about getting kids more excited about comics by getting them to like the kid. The kid who monkeys around on the guitar tends to buy more music, right? So it's not about creating the next generation of cartoonists, although that's part of it. It's also getting them excited about the medium by making them more knowledgeable about the medium. And it, and it is a great time. I mean, I've done all three. Yep. Mm-hmm. And uh, it is a trem- tremendous time interacting with the kids, actually getting a chance to talk to them. Um, I've been running it. I just was at C2E2 actually this last weekend, 
and kept running into kids going, oh, you did the Twisted Journeys books? Those yeah. are the, like, <laughs> like where you pick your own path through the story. You mean Choose Your Own Adventure? No, I did not. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, you know, I did several of those. And the kids were like, oh, we get these in school. We, you know, we love them. We, I've gone mm. through all of them. Yeah. And, um, you know, you get to interact with it, it. Even online, you don't necessarily tend to interact with the younger of the readers. Oh, yeah, you know, of course and, not, and yeah. actually getting to interact with the younger mm -hmm. readers and, and seeing their enthusiasm and being able to encourage their enthusiasm, it's a great thing. Yeah, thank you for yeah. doing, oh, observing yeah, your mic technique. Definitely, <laughs> I, I completely agree. Um, you know, I occasionally I do get invited, not so much right now, just because I'm, I'm, my deadlines are so insane at the moment and I've had to swear off. Swear off going outside and seeing the sun for about the next two months. Um, <laughs> Is but, that why know, when I, I invited you onto the show, you said, yes, I want to talk to people? That does explain the little out. I really, do, I really out do enjoy you know, going yeah. to libraries, going to conventions, and, and, and meeting kids, and especially you know, the younger kids. Um, I, my books, are, they don't skew super young, but you know, every now and then, like – there's something really cool about meeting a teenage girl who's like really excited to meet you. You know, like she loves your comics and you know, she, she can't even talk because she's so excited to meet you. Yeah. That's happened to me a couple times and it's, I don't know, it's pretty awesome and it's pretty adorable. Um, I was at a, just a local science fiction convention here in Halifax, uh, at the end of last year. And, you know, a lady was there with her, with her kids. They were about 10 years old. And, um, my, my boyfriend and a couple of my friends, we all had a table there and, and uh, we, we had ordered pizza because we were starving. So we were sitting there, you know, working on some commissions and surrounded by comics and eating pizza. And this, you know, this kid came up to us and looked at us and was like, you get to draw and eat pizza all day? <laughs> <laughs> we blew his little mind. It was just, you know, it was the highlight of his day, you know, to see the artist drawing and eating pizza and you know that is the coolest thing in the world the whole so. drive home that's all that kid thought about <laughs> <laughs> when i grow up i'm gonna eat pizza i yeah. and make those I did a comics for him. i did a, a, a minecraft drawing for him or something like that oh, he was wow. minecraft but yeah i'm 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 totally open to it we'll have to talk We'll talk about it off the air, but yeah. I just wanted to, I wanted the invitation extended publicly so that yeah. uh, I, I could guilt you into coming. <laughs> I, was <gonna> say, <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to find a better way around it, but yeah, I, I was raised Catholic. Yeah, you it's, it's a guilt for thing. Some leverage. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't know, but. Uh, uh, anyway, okay, well, thank you guys for this great episode. Uh, technical uh, problems aside, it, I think came together really nicely. And once again, I want to, at the top, thank Matt Dubay and Tom Smith and Eric Kloster and Kip and Eli, all the guys at AADL, for uh, working so hard to make the show as good as it is. And, uh, man, you guys pulled it together at the last minute, did an awesome job. And then, uh, Paul Story, good to see you again. Likewise. Storyville.com. Storyville. S-T-O-R-R-I-E-V-I-L-L-E.com. Now, let's see if I can come up with a mnemonic for it. No. Also, Storyville <laughs> on the Twitters. <laughs> right. Uh, so that that's where you can follow him, find him. He's also on the Google Pluses and the Facebooks and all the social places. He's on Path. He's on Instagram. He's on the Hunt. Yeah, and he's on uh, Every Me. That's I, another I'm new on one. CompuServe. <laughs> <laughs> What's your CompuServe address? <laughs> one, one, <laughs> yeah. two, five. Ed, Eddie's on the MySpaces, too, everybody. Uh, I, <laughs> I killed the MySpace. Uh, oh. <laughs> and then Sharon Iverson, you can't find her anywhere except AADL. Reading org. all these great graphic novels, yes. that's where you'll find my face. <laughs> oh, oh, nice. Yeah. Oh, well played. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yes, behind that graphic novel is Sharon Iverson. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Sharon, for showing up with the great recommendations. Sure, sure. Uh, and uh, also for the help that you're going to be giving us with Kids Read Comics this yeah. year. And then I got to thank Kevin Coppa of uh, youtube.com slash corner sphere. Go there and check out all of his amazing fan videos. He's also on the Deviant Arts, and you can find awesome pictures of him looking exactly like David Tennant. Uh, we'll put a link to that in the show <laughs> notes. Uh, it, it's, 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 it's a stunning resemblance. I'm surprised that he doesn't get uh, harassed by women at comic conventions. I'm uh, sure he does. For, for his, uh, yeah, but. And then last but not least, we have to thank Faith Aaron Hicks of friendswithboys.com for showing up here. Yay. This thank you. very last minute. Thank you so much for making time, taking time out of your day, and uh, nope. you know later than we had anticipated uh, to uh, talk with us about Avatar. We'll have to have you back to talk more about your own work in a little bit more right, detail. Cool. 
Yeah, so, I'd love that. This was fun. Oh, cool. Well, I'm so glad. Well, thank you, everybody, mm -hmm. for downloading, listening. Thanks, everybody, in the chat for and those who use the Comics Great hashtag today to help uh, you know you spread the word about the show. Uh, this episode will be available at comicsgreat.com slash CAG53 when we have finished editing it and posting it to the YouTubes and every place else. Uh, you can also find it, the video podcast version, at comics.aadl.org. And until next time, two weeks from now, uh, I have been Jersey Drozd of comicsgreat.com and Jersey on the Twitters. Okay, bye. Bye! <laughs> and now they're running the credits.